one myth about brachytherapy is that it does not have any side effects. Um, and therefore it is, quotes, easier than external beam radiation therapy, end of quotes. The reality is this isn't quite true. I, I would say that the side effect profile is simply different between the two. So how are, is the side effect profile different between brachytherapy and external beam radiation? So the first way in which it's different is um, this temporary side effects, so things like irritation of the bladder and the bowel, if there is any, tend to last longer following the brachytherapy implant procedure than they do after completing external beam radiation therapy. So to quantify that, I'll say um, after external beam radiation therapy, these side effects tend to settle down within three to six weeks. After brachytherapy, whatever side effects there are, tend to take between three and six months or maybe more to settle down. So some men are surprised to hear that. It is fair to say that bowel side effects are less common with brachytherapy. However, uh, one thing that men aren't expecting is that the chance of having annoying temporary bladder side effects is greater. So what I mean by that is men may go from having a perfectly functional bladder and then all of a sudden, as a, as a function of having temporary side effects of treatment, they're peeing a lot all the time. At night and during the day, they're not getting a good night's rest. They may be standing at the urinal for a long, long time because the stream is so slow, these sorts of things. And so what we find is the chance that somebody's going to have annoying bladder side effects on average is about 25% after a brachytherapy procedure, bearing in mind, of course, it gets better eventually, um, versus considerably less than 10% after um, the external beam radiation. Um, so these are things, so it's, it's kind of different, and men have to weigh them, how they feel about the side effects of each sort in determining on the side effect side of things which treatment in their minds may be the most appropriate for them. Um, another myth about the brachy would be, it is the one and only treatment I should have if I'm not going to have surgery. Now the reality is that brachytherapy may not be advisable for some men. Um, now first of all, their cancer may be too big. What I mean by that is brachytherapy really treats just the prostate if you're giving it on its own. Um, so, you know, if, if there's cancer in which we feel it's likely to have extended outside the capsule, brachytherapy may be uh, inadvisable. Sometimes you can get around that by include, uh, uh, including some external beam radiation therapy beforehand. But generally speaking, there are some cancers that we think aren't suitable for brachytherapy. There may be things to do with that person's anatomy, if you will, that may make brachytherapy inadvisable, so they may have a very large prostate. By that, I don't mean a large cancer, but what we know is that men, as they get older, can get benign prostate enlargement, and it's just technically difficult if the prostate is large to put the seeds in, to make a long story short. The final thing, I guess, uh, that mm, I guess sometimes people are thinking, and they may have been told this by the doctors that referred them to us in the first place is, I am young, so this applies to young men, of course, I am young, therefore I must have surgery. Um, now, why might a referring doctor say that? So they might say that because um, there's this idea that any form of radiation, including brachytherapy, might cause a cancer. And basically the risk of uh, causing a cancer because somebody's had brachytherapy is extremely low and very, very rare and the reasonable studies to show that. So, so although we have to mention that, particularly to younger men, um, because it's so rare, it usually isn't a major barrier to people thinking about um, having brachytherapy. The other thing that men are often told is that, quotes, we don't, don't have data uh, on how successful uh, brachytherapy is at controlling prostate cancer in the really long haul. And of course that's relevant in really young men who might have a life expectancy of 20 to 25 years. We do have information from Seattle where they invented the thing uh, going out to 17 or 18 years and that information tells us that you know basically the good results most people have been publishing for a long time at 10 years seem to be holding water well beyond. So we are more comfortable considering brachytherapy for younger men than we used to be. But there are a few particular things that we do go through in younger men thinking about brachytherapy, but it isn't off the table simply because men are young, let's put it that way.